we're going to spend a great deal of time in this course looking at catalyzed reactions. And so in this unit, I wanted to spend some time talking about the general principles of catalysis. So we're going to look at the energetics of catalysis, and that you may have seen before. Typically in units on kinetics and introductory chemistry, the energetic principles of catalysis are covered, things like the reaction coordinate diagram you see on this slide. What you probably haven't encountered is the mechanistic basis of catalysis. In other words, what do catalytic mechanisms look like? How do catalysts operate? What are the different mechanistic roles that a catalyst can play? We're going to answer all of these questions in this unit and we'll return to these principles again and again and again as we look at various types of catalyzed reactions in future videos. Just to give a few general examples, one of the most common types of catalysis that we'll see is acid-base catalysis, and this applies both in a laboratory and a biochemical context. In particular, in biochemistry, enzymes are almost by definition catalysts. They accelerate chemical reactions and bring substrates into appropriate positioning to make reactions go faster. Enzymes are really the ultimate catalysts. We won't talk much about it, but transition metal complexes can also act as catalysts, and this is really a big area now and a growing area of research. Reactions that combine the reactivity of transition metal complexes with organic molecules, organotransition metal chemistry. Catalysis is at the center of all of these topics, and so these general principles are critical for diving into those topics in more detail. Let's start with the fundamentals of catalysis. A catalyst is a species that increases the rate of a chemical reaction or accelerates the rate without being consumed. And mechanistically, what that means is that the catalyst is at some point regenerated in the course of the reaction mechanism. It's consumed and then regenerated. Now, catalysts always participate in reaction mechanisms and 99 times out of 100, the concentration of the catalyst appears in the rate law. This means that the reaction is not zero order in the catalyst. And mechanistically, you sometimes see this distinction made between a catalyst and an intermediate. So just to talk about that briefly, an intermediate is something that is first generated in the course of a mechanism. Here I'm representing the intermediate as I, and then consumed in a later step before the final product is generated. A catalyst we can think of as almost the inverse. A catalyst first is consumed in an early step of the reaction mechanism and then is produced in a later step, not necessarily when the final product is formed, but at some point the catalyst is regenerated and can return to react with another molecule of reactant or substrate. You'll often see reaction coordinate or reaction profile diagrams where the catalytic reaction has the same number of steps as the uncatalyzed reaction. This is actually quite uncommon. More commonly, the mechanisms of catalytic and uncatalytic or uncatalyzed reactions are completely different. The numbers and types of elementary steps may be different and the kind of rate limiting or rate determining step may be different. Energetically though, what a catalyst does is it lowers the activation energy, what we'll call delta G double dagger of the reaction, while leaving the thermodynamics unchanged. And we can see that on this general reaction profile diagram on the right. In blue, we have the uncatalyzed pathway, the conversion of A to B without a catalyst. And we can see it occurs through a single step mechanism, a single transition state at the top of the reaction coordinate diagram. And after that single step, we form B, the product. The catalyzed reaction involves an intermediate. And we see that as this energy minimum right here. Again, though, we start at A and we end at B, so the reactants and products are the same. This is why the standard free energy change of the reaction is unchanged even when a catalyst is added. The catalyst is consumed in an early stage of the reaction but regenerated later. So one way to think about this is that we have C plus A on the reactant side, where C is the catalyst, and C plus B on the product side, where B is the product. When the product is generated, the catalyst is present, since the catalyst has been regenerated at some point in the course of the mechanism. I like this particular example because the number of elementary steps in the catalyzed process is different from the number of elementary steps in the uncatalyzed process, and this is extremely common. The other important thing to notice is that the free energy of activation, or the activation energy, has changed. It's significantly lower for the catalyzed pathway 
than it is for the uncatalyzed pathway, and this is the hallmark of a catalyst. Even though the numbers and types of elementary steps can differ, we often notice similarities between the rate determining step of a catalytic reaction and the rate determining step of its uncatalyzed version. So for instance, in this hypothetical example, the rate determining transition state is this one here. And we may notice similarities between this structure and the transition state for the uncatalyzed reaction. What the catalyst ultimately does is stabilize the rate determining transition state. And this may happen through intermolecular forces, non-covalent interactions, or through covalent bonding. If the transition state structure is stabilized by resonance or an inductive effect or some other kind of structural factor, this can lead to catalysis as well. And so to really understand catalysis on a mechanistic level, appreciating the structures of transition states is key. And that's what we're gonna talk about next.